In ancient mythology, the human kidneys were regarded as the seat of secret thoughts, reflections and emotions. We now know that the kidneys have several vital biological functions. One such kidney function is the maintenance of the overall body fluid balance by regulating the concentration of ions and substances therein, which are essential for all cellular, metabolic processes of our body. Let's have a closer look at sodium and what happens when a healthy person consumes sodium through meals or beverages. Sodium is an electrolyte, and together with chloride, it exists in body fluids and is the main contributor to extracellular osmolality, plasma volume and blood pressure. Osmolality refers to the number of moles of dissolved particles per kilogram of fluid. When diet-derived sodium is increased in plasma, the change in osmolality is sensed by hypothalamic osmoreceptors, which regulate thirst, leading to increased water intake and antidiuretic hormone release. First, the increased antidiuretic hormone leads to increased renal water retention and reduced urine output so that the increased water intake can act in a compensatory manner to the increased plasma sodium. This ultimately re-establishes plasma osmolality at the expense of an increased plasma volume. In the process of equilibrating back to normal osmolality, thirst and antidiuretic hormone release will increasingly diminish. As a consequence, aldosterone, the increased water fraction of the plasma volume, and the absence of antidiuretic hormone increase blood pressure and in turn trigger pressure induced naturesis to re-establish the plasma volume. For a long time the concept of sodium was based on the two compartment model which assumes the total body water to be divided over the intercellular and extracellular compartments with a similar osmolality. While potassium represents the main cation in the intracellular compartment, the opposite is true for the extracellular compartment. Here, sodium is the main cation and driver for preserving the effective circulating volume. Only a minor portion of intercellular water will shift towards the extracellular space to aid the re-establishment of osmolality. These mechanisms were first described by Borst and later on by Guyton, who both demonstrated that long-term control of arterial pressure is closely related to body fluid homeostasis. Previously, it was assumed that an equal amount of consumed sodium is excreted by the kidneys in a ratio of 1 to 1. Studies clearly demonstrated this not to be true, and scientific advances in space medicine and magnetic resonance imaging technology revealed an additional sodium deposit in skin and skeletal muscle interstatium. Tissue deposits of sodium therefore turned the two-compartment model into a three-compartment one. In summary, Based on neural and endocrine input, kidneys regulate fluid volume and osmolality by altering the amount of excreted sodium and water. Therefore, not only uremic toxins, but also the inability of regulating the inorganic sodium and water in end-stage kidney disease patients imposes detrimental health effects, which will be addressed in the next video.